on the floor for Detroit. We've got Thorpe. Hunter is out there with Joe Dumars. And it's Hill. And it's Long in at the four-man position. Here's Thorpe. The shot, no good. Good D by Wilkin. Over Dumars. Orlando gets it back. Oh, tough play underneath there to give them another possession. Just what they were hoping for. A little more time off the clock. He misses the free throw. And the word you got to use is explosive out there when, when talking about Grant Hill. He's one of those guys who doesn't wait for the game to come to him. He, he goes out and just makes things happen. Of course, he didn't have an attempt there in the first half. He's hoping to be a little bit more active and aggressive here and draw some fouls here in the second half. Yeah, but I just love the winning mentality that Grant brings. A, a big bruising forward who can score at a steady clip. The free throw drops for Grant. And Grant drops them both. Pistons trail by seven. Hunter with it. Side Hill. Six on the shot clock. Fires for three. The Pistons keeping it alive. A new 14. And Long gets it to go. Something that's kept this game close is the fact that the rebound stats for both teams are almost identical. The battle to a standstill on the boards has really been something to watch. And the game's not over yet. We'll see if one of these teams maintains more energy than the other going down the stretch. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. A chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Penny Hardaway. And in terms of his shooting, this has been one of the more accurate performances you'll ever see. I mean, he's been in constant motion, creating a lot of good looks for himself. But, but still, even when you're wide open, you expect to miss some of the time. That has not been the case here tonight. This guy has made everything. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, during the break, I listened in on what the head coach for the Magic was saying to his team. He's happy with how they've been playing. He told them, hey, they had their chance, but this is where we take it from them. This is our game and our series. He's got him pretty fired up, Kevin. He was all alone on that one. Now it's just a three-point magic lead. You know, Hill can turn it on so quickly. Once he buries a couple of quick shots, then that basket starts to expand. Now a timeout called by Orlando. And team strategies closely guarded. One aspect of the game the fans aren't always privy to. Yeah, typically there's some type of adjustment made out of a timeout. It might be major or it could be just a slight tweak. McKee's checked in for Hunter. It's stolen by Hill. McKee against Armstrong. The shot by Long, no good. That's the kind of D you need when he's got the ball near the hoop. They were all over. Man, what a pass that was there. He really, really relishes making the game easier for his team. Now, here is Hill. The pass to McKee. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. Good on the first, and that shrinks the margin to just four. He drops them both. And that would have been a killer if he missed one of those, but he was rock solid. That trims the lead now to a one possession game. Cycle passes to Armstrong. Cycle tip back in for two. And the Magic lead by five. Yeah, that's something they can always count on from Cycle. Strength on the backboard, coupled with that soft touch at the rim. He's had some huge nights on the boards over the course of his career. There's 117 left in the fourth quarter. Armstrong passes to Grant. Outside, Scott. 
it's going to be out of bounds. The Magic will retain possession. We've got 108 left in the game. Lock at six. And he lays in the alley-oop. And it's a seven-point Magic lead. My goodness. Say, say that one. I, I want to see that again. Me too. Just absolutely beautiful. Virtually impossible to top that alley-oop. Pass to Armstrong. 43 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here's Heikley. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. And they call Cycli the spin doctor because of all his fancy footwork on that low blog. I've seen Ronnie lead more than a few guys grabbing at air when he pulls off one of those post moves. And so both free throws are good. And it's a nine-point ball game here. I think it's a wrap. When the game's on the line, he knows how to deliver the crushing blow. Our timeout called by Detroit. They're trailing by nine. There's 37 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Orlando making some changes. ABC's checked in for Grant. Wilkins comes in for Scott, and it's Bowie in for Anderson. And a different look here for the Pistons. Off the inbound, Williams dishes to McKee. Can't cash in from close range. That's not the type of opportunity he fails to convert very often. And the shot goes in from Bowie. And you can sense that these fans, these players, they are ready to celebrate. And I think they can start that celebration right now. I mean, what a terrific team victory. Drills it from outside. Such a height mismatch out on the perimeter, and they give up the triple. And they can just let the clock run out here. Cannot argue with the W. And here's Armstrong. And so it's Orlando winning this one. A pretty good feeling right now for them to be out in front like this in the series. You know, Kevin, momentum so, so critical. And you know they'll want to ride this wave into game two. And that about wraps it up for this broadcast of the NBA Eastern Conference quarterfinals. For Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and David Alden, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA presented by 2K Sports. And we'll see you next time.
Here's Malone. Now the pass to Isley. And that's going to be his fifth, guys. One more, and he's done. Russell, he's checked in for John Stockton. Here's Hornacek. And trying for the go-ahead basket, it doesn't go in. Minnesota's gone 0-3 so far in the fourth quarter from long range. We've got Garnett. West is out there with Porter, and it's Garrett in its center. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. Porter, a rebound by Malone. Malone's got his 20th rebound here tonight. Saw that coming. Here's Isley. Passes it to Malone. Over Porter. Kept alive. Ostertag gets the bucket. Ostertag's got the lead up to one now for Utah. You know, I thought in the first half this guy was pressing. He was rushing. Now he's settled into the game. Minnesota calls timeout. Nice game. Great performance by Carl Malone. And he's just attacking the rim with force here. They need to try and deny him the ball in the paint to keep him away from the basket. And now we present our Jordan player of the game. And as you'd expect, he's done most of his damage in that low block. I mean, that was the game plan to get it to him in the paint and just let him go to work. And boy, has the big fella delivered. He has just killed them down low. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldridge. Well, during that break, Minnesota's coach had some words for his team. He said he just wants them to play faster. It feels like they've been too lackadaisical with the ball and that their aggressiveness just isn't there right now. Kevin, back to you. I'll tell you, most of the time, this guy's going to finish that, but that was tremendous defense that prohibits him from completing the play. Offensive rebound. Rest kicks to Garrett. Outside, Porter. Shot clock at six. And out of bounds as the Jazz gain possession. And the Jazz call time Stop here. Seven left in the fourth. Pass to Russell. Nails the wide open jump shot. And the Jazz lead by three. And the lack of effort to fight over the screen there makes that an easy shot. You know, we see this all the time, Greg. You're basically, as a defender, hoping the man misses rather than putting in the work to get over screens. Minnesota calls timeout. They're behind by three. 151 left in the fourth quarter. Here's Garnett. 143 left in the fourth quarter of this one. Looking to get it going. And no good. Trying to use the glass. Nothing seems to be going his way this quarter. Well, not at the offensive end, certainly. He cannot buy a bucket right now. Here's Isley. He blocks it again. Uh, a defensive stalwart so far. That's six blocks. Greg protecting the rim. Love the hustle. Utah calls timeout. They're in front by three. 121 left here in the fourth quarter. on the shot clock. Malone. That shot, no good. Excellent D there from Garnett. Pass to Gugliano. Always going up for the alley-oop here. Uh, showing again why he's a champion. Rising to the challenge. Utah leading. There's a minute left in the fourth quarter. Puts it up. Off the left rim and out. 
the strong first half. This guy has not been the same. And a largely a no-show right here. And stolen by Russell. Fast break. Here come the Jazz. Rest again for Nisek. Another shot. It drops. So much riding on that shot. What a bucket. And I'll tell you, that changes things, doesn't it? Good job, young fella. What a game. Now, here's Porter. They get a hand on it. And now we've got the intentional foul. Stockton's checked in for the Jazz. 23 seconds left to play here in the fourth. And that's an intentional foul. Yeah, you, you can't let him hold the ball and just milk those last seconds away. He drops the first one, and that gives them a four-point cushion. Stockton, just a remarkable point guard. Lights out shooter and an even better distributor. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a five-point game. Yeah, two-possession game now after knocking both of those down. Minnesota calls timeout. They're down by five. We've got 22 seconds left to play in the final quarter. We've got 22 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And so they choose to intentionally foul. Gets the first, and that increases their lead to six. He's off on the free throw, unable to get that second one to drop in. And looking for a very quick shot here. Well, Greg, you've got to run a play that's a quick strike. You've got to immediately foul after that. Yeah, that was a really good look there. Porter's court vision sometimes, I think, is underrated. And they need to stop the clock so there's a foul. Yeah, and, and luckily, they, they've got terrific depth at that position. If there's one spot on the floor where they can afford to lose somebody, that would probably be it. Second free throw, no good that time. He really wanted that one. Yeah, and the defense of Russell just outstanding. Feels like he can shut down any player in this league. And so it's Utah who scraped by with a win. A pretty good feeling right now for them to be out in front like this in the series. You know, Kevin, momentum so, so critical. And you know they'll want to ride this wave into game two. Well, that'll do it for now. Glad you could join us for the first round of the Western Conference playoffs. For Doris Burke, David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and the rest of our terrific 2K Sports crew, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. See you later.
and uh, 101 left to play here in the fourth. They've got Anderson. Scott is out there with Shake and Bake. Then there's Armstrong. And it's Cycli in at the center, walking down the middle. So that's the lineup on the floor for the Magic. Now, here's Dumas. Cycli pulls it in. One on one here. Here's Strong. Hunter grabs the miss. Now, Detroit moving it up. The putback. Great positioning on the putback. Thorpe's got the lead up to seven now for Detroit. They're in total command of this game with time starting to run out. The reason why they've tightened up the vice grip a little more each time up the floor. We'll see if they can close this one out. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. They're trailing by seven. 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. And now we get the chance to present our Jordan player of the game, Grant Hill. And what an amazing ball game we've seen from him. It's been a one-man show worth the price of admission all by itself. There wasn't anything he couldn't do on that court tonight. Some players rise to the occasion in the playoff spotlight, and some wilt under it. We know which type he is. What a stunning night for him. And they call Cycli the spin doctor because of all his fancy footwork on that low blog. I've seen Ronnie leave more than a few guys grabbing at air when he pulls off one of those post moves. And that one goes in. Two from the line that time. Time called here. The Pistons decide to talk it over. They're up by five. 23 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Horace Grant, he's checked in for the Magic. Scott comes in for Bowie. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin. The head coach for Detroit had some instruction for the guys during the break. He told his team, if we can get some defensive stops here, we can win this game. It's down to who wants it more. Kevin. So he goes two for two at the line, and it's a seven-point game. You no know, mistakes there. Good free throws to give them just a little bit more cushion. Another miss by Orlando. And he's a good shooter from outside, but not sure from that deep. You know, we're seeing players move further and further back to create space, but that does make it a tougher shot. And so it's Detroit with the W. Just a massive victory, Greg. Maybe it's overstating it, but I think this was a game they had to have. And I don't think it's overstating it. I agree with you. I mean, going down 2-0 would have given this team...
pass to Carr. To take the lead. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. And that one falls, and that puts him up by one point. Minnesota making some changes. Garrett's checked in, and West subs in for Robinson. Russell, he's checked in for the Jazz. Hornacek comes in for John Stockton. He hits both from the strike. And one difference this have is that when they get to the line, they're converting. We've got Carr, and it's Garrett in at the center. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. The shot by Aisley, no good. The Timberwolves shooting in the fourth quarter has looked shabby, 38%. Carr, the pass to West. Nice ball movement by Minnesota. Here's Marbury. And that's collected by Hornacek. Hornacek's got four rebounds now tonight. To the middle. Here's Malone. And he hits it to tie the game up. Malone's got 16 points here in the second half. Efficiency has been the hallmark right now down the stretch. He is making the most of his opportunity. And the Timberwolves call time here. And now a moment to take a look at our Jordan player of the game. And he's been out there doing his thing, just dominating on the glass. There aren't many players who put more into their rebounding than he does. And we saw that again tonight. Nobody could match his effort on the board. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin. Well, I was able to listen in to the Timberwolves head coach talking to his team. He said, guys, we don't want to play hero ball. We don't want to take threes that aren't there. There are better options when you run the offense all the way through. Kevin will see if they can make that adjustment. Utah calls timeout. Every timeout, a chance to review the lineups, matchups, or call a play. And I agree. I think there's going to be a new wrinkle in their game plan when they come out of this timeout. And so it's Utah here with the ball. Trailing by two. To the inside, Ostertag from inside. They shoot again. Rebound, Minnesota. Garrett's got 10 rebounds here tonight. So active. Here's Gugliotta. He's guarded by Russell. The shot by Gugliotta, no good. Hornacek passes to Russell. There's 138 left in the fourth quarter. Here's Isley. And he can't bank that one in. Gugliano passes to Marburg. At the floater, Greg Ostertag with the rebound. Utah has gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Count the basket. Hornacek's got it all tied up now for the Jams. And that's right in his wheelhouse, looking to make an impact when it counts. You know, they want the ball in his hands here because they trust him to hit all the big shots. Minnesota calls timeout. Here's Marber. Fifty-five seconds left in the game. Floats one up. And we're going to have a jump ball. It's tied up there. And the Timberwolves with possession here. He lobs it up. Yes! And how about the incredible timing on that alley-oop? He absolutely hammered it down. Well, I tell you what, that's the play we'll remember if they can put together a little surge to break this game open. And the Jazz call time here. They trail by two. There's 45 seconds left in the fourth quarter.
There's 45 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Here's Russell with the three. Nails the tray. Oh, you just love seeing a player with absolutely no fear. Cool, calm, collected, and confident in the biggest moment of the game. Yes. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. That one on Malone. Yeah, way to play in attack mode and get to the line. And, you know, the defense gets their money's worth on that foul, stopping the layup and not giving up the and one. And so he's good on both free throws, and that gives them the lead. And that's big there. Once he got the opportunity to get to the line and take the lead, you have got to convert. And the Jazz call time here. They're behind by one. 29 seconds left in the fourth. Timberwolves on defense. seconds left here in the fourth quarter no good from the win and an intentional foul right there yeah you, you have to do that though you can't just let them dribble the game out. exactly I mean got to stop the clock any way possible and hope they alligator arm a few of those free throws and he cannot get the first one to drop tough one to miss and he does get the second one and that will put them up by two 16 seconds left to play here in the fourth. Here's Isley. Carr covering. Here's Malone. No good. And now they foul and stop the clock. No choice but to foul there, but, but he's probably the last guy you want to see on the line. But there was no time really to be selective. Stopping the clock was the priority. He hits the first one, and that makes it a three-point lead. So he gets them both, and it's a four-point ball game. Those free throws are the nail in the coffin, guys. And so it's the Timberwolves who come out on top here. Just a massive victory, Greg. Maybe it's overstating it, but I think this was a game they had to have. And I don't think it's overstating it. I agree with you. I mean, going down 2-0 would have given this team a huge hill to climb. But now at one game apiece and with some... call the eight second violation too much time getting it up court for the Rockets Elijah Wan's checked in for the dude and it's Ellie in for price Portland also making some changes Robinson comes in for Robinson and Ryder subbed in for boss we've got Drexler Ellie is out there with Johnson and it's ABC and it's Elijah Wan in the pivot spot manning the middle so that's who's on the floor for the Rockets Misses the corner three. Ooh, he missed an easy chance to put some points on the board. He won't get a much better look at that kind of shot again here probably tonight. Give them credit. They've worked hard all game now looking to finish it. No, oh, great job of getting in position to win a game. It's been an all-out effort from the squad. Here's Drexler. And nothing but hair on that one. Down low, Anderson. And he can't extend the lead to double digits. And I think they realize any hope of a comeback is gone. Well, realistic at this stage of the game, they're going to lose this one, but will they take something from the loss? And here is Wallace. Defense! 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 
And so it's Portland winning this one. Just a massive victory, Greg. Maybe it's overstating it, but I think this was a game they had to have. And I don't think it's overstating it. I agree with you. I mean, going down 2-0 would have given this team a huge hill to climb. But now at one game apiece and with some momentum, this is anybody's series. So it's Phoenix now. Here's Kidd. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. And Kidd, really just a nightly triple-double threat. Big point guard who can score, pass, and also rebounds the ball. Ryan needs checked in for the Suns. Swallows comes in for Steve Nash. Now the free throw is good. Now leading by one. They're ahead, but if they don't get a stop here, that free throw could prove critical. And Phoenix, look at who they've got on the floor. Ryan is out there with Wright. Then it's Jason Kidd. And it's Sabalos. And it's Johnson in at the point. He must have a real good feel for the fader. I mean, he uses it even when no one's on. He dishes it to Kidd. He can't get it to go. Nice D from Shrimp. More good work on the glass there. When it's all said and done, I think rebounding might tell the story in this game. Really well done there. Just confident and composed, never in a hurry. Here's Kidd after the basket by Seattle. To the paint. That's good, and the Seattle lead is cut down to just one on the bucket from Bryant. And how about the grit and determination in the post? I mean, essential qualities to have late in a close game. Perkins, he hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. And one of the stories of the second has has been all of those second chance points. I mean, they have been terrific on the offensive backboard. Now here's Johnson. Bryant dishes to Johnson. Shrimp with the steal. And here we go. Fast break. Peyton's got it. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Now it's a five-point Seattle lead. And with the game he's having, there's no doubt he'll be the guy they lean on to protect the lead. Johnson surveying the floor. Pass to Bryant. Six to shoot. Over Peyton, and Bryant gets it to go. Seattle calls timeout. Every timeout, a chance to review the lineups, matchups, or call a play. You know, that's what coaches are paid to do, right? I mean, curious to see what they go with here. And now the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, Gary Payton. Yeah, and his performance has been a jaw dropper. It must have been feeling great coming into the building tonight because once he hit the court, it was all working for him. He was in a zone. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin. During the last break, I heard Seattle's coach as he addressed the team. 
His concern was both their inconsistency and their amount of three-point shots. He said, let's move the ball for good shots. If you have an open three, take it. Otherwise, let's attack the rim and put some pressure on these guys. Kevin? Thank you, David. Now here's Kidd after Kevin Johnson's miss. Sabalos gets a hand on it, controls the rebound, and puts it back up and in. And that's a pure hustle play, getting to the offensive glass for the tipping. And that's the kind of quality you see in any strong offensive rebounder, isn't it? Now here's Peyton. Fires it up. They get it again. The Suns trail. One fourteen left to play in the final quarter. Here's Kidd. Feeds it to Bryant. Goes straight through the defender for the dunk. Draws the foul. He'll go to the line. That's on Detlef Shrimp. And you can see Kidd's ability to pass truly is a gift. When one of his teammates is open, he is quick to get them the ball in rhythm. Free throw. Good. Bryant. A great job to get the bucket and to get to the line. When the game's on the line, you want your guys attacking like he did there. Now here's Peyton. It's Hawkins on the wing. Right between the eyes. And you can't get a bigger bucket than that. That's why they put the ball in his hands. They thought they could count on him to make crucial shots. Phoenix calls timeout. They're trailing by one. 52 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here's Kidd. It's blocked. And here's Hawkins. Here's the pass to Perkins. There's 37 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. And you know, some call him Sleepy Sam. Others, the big smooth. Perkins may never be a true superstar, but he contributes in almost every facet of the game. free throw is good and that will put them up by two. And so he drops them both. It's a three point game. We've got 33 seconds left in the game. Hit against Hawkins. Kid kicks to right. And the rejection by Perkins. And he's able to get it back. And an intentional foul there stops the clock. Yeah, you know what? Smart foul. you got to try and extend the game. So the first one drops, and that gives them a four-point cushion. So he goes two for two at the lock, and it's a five-point game. So they get what they want out of that trip. Uh, you know, now a two-possession game. Timeout call. The Suns, they're down by five. 19 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Guys, your thoughts? Yeah, trying to get back in this thing. They need a score. Yeah, and quick. No room for error. No time to waste. Nineteen seconds left in the fourth quarter. Sabalos passes to right. Picks it out to Johnson to end the run. And the Suns get it back. And that's a good job of just getting after it on the backboard. Gets him another possession and allows them to run even more clock. So we see the Sonics get the win here. You have to think at this point, up three zip. It's only a matter of time now, Greg, until this series is in the books. Uh, you know, this victory all but seals the deal. As strong as they look throughout this game and this series, I'll be shocked if they don't close it out in game four. And that about wraps it up, folks. We hope you've enjoyed our broadcast of the NBA Western Conference quarterfinals. 
For David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and Chris Weber, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA on 2K Sports. See you next time. Campbell, the pass to Kobe. Now Jones. Pass to Van Exel to tie it up. And that comes off the assist by Jones. Jones has got his fourth assist in this one. They've got Campbell. Jones is out there with Van Exel. Then there's Shaquille O'Neal. And it's Kobe in at the three slot. That's who's in the game for the Lakers. Now here's Simmons. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. And with the offense getting right to the rim, at least they saved the layup. Old school D right there. Just telling them no easy layups. It's as simple as that. And that's what you expect from them. And the first one at the line is good. And the Lakers making a change here. Kersey's checked in. Smith checked in for Sacramento. Both good from the line that time. And they're doing a better job of working themselves to the line here in the second half. This is how you do it. That's exactly how you do it. Defender pressing up on you, you press right back. Here's Van Exel. Doesn't go that time. Now Sacramento takes it the other way. I wonder what the score would be if they weren't controlling the backboard. And Greg, it's clearly been their edge. And in a close game like this, you look for every edge you can find. Now here's Shaq. Out of bounds, Sacramento takes possession. The Kings leading. Williamson with it. Colonies defended by Shaq. Kicks it to Williamson. Four on the clock. Smith trying to break loose. Love seeing O'Neal use his body to come up with those blocks. An imposing force and a pretty consistent defender as well. Here's Smith. And it's going to be a 24-second shot clock violation. They turn it over. You know, guys, sometimes that just happens, but you don't like to see it when the game is this close. Los Angeles calls timeout. And they're committing an awful lot of fouls here, and not of the good variety. You don't want to give up easy layups, sure, but it's been a nonstop parade to the foul line. And now let's present our Jordan player of the game, Mitch Richmond. And the decision-making tonight has just been outstanding. If the shot hasn't been there for him, he's just kept the ball moving. And that patience is how he's got his field goal percentage to almost 60 here tonight. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Hey, Kevin, during that last break, I heard the Lakers coach talk to his team. Yes, they're behind right now, but he's still upbeat. He said, guys, we can get back in this game. Stay together out there. All-out effort can win this game. Fellas? All right, David, thanks. And, and guys, this is where their depth really comes into play. They, they've got such talent at that position. They'd love to have him out there, but they won't suffer much of a drop-off. Got a piece of it. And pushing it up. Here's Los Angeles. Here's O'Neal to take the lead. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. 
And O'Neal, clearly one of the biggest human beings you'll ever see. A mammoth of a man. About a seventh of a ton. And yet, unstoppable. And no good as the first free throw missing for him. We'll see if he can nail the second. So neither attempt will fall that time for him. The Kings have gone 7 of 13 from the field here in the fourth. Richmond with the bucket. He's so clutch, Kevin. When the pressure is at its highest, that's when he's at his very best. Los Angeles calls timeout. They're trailing by three. 153 left in the fourth quarter. One fifty three left here in the fourth quarter. Here's Bryant and the dunk by Kobe. And Bryant is the guy they look to when it comes to scoring big hoop. He doesn't run away from pressure situations. As a matter of fact, he runs right into the eye of the storm. And some stats here, guys. The scoring breakdown for the Kings. I mean, they've made the long range look like a layup at times in this one, guys. They've consistently drilled the mid-range jumping tonight as well, which has forced the D to come out on. Now here's Richmond. One thirty-five left in the game. Here's Bryant and the dunk by Kobe. And Kevin, when he catches the hot hand, good luck trying to slow him down. Plays so under control, can spot up, drive, create for himself a matchup nightmare. Richmond against Kobe. For Bryant. Richmond no good. The Lakers in the lead. 112 left to play in the final quarter. Bryant that's for two. Again, Los Angeles. And Kobe lives for these situations. You know how much he likes the spotlight. And boy, does he deliver time and time again. Now here's Richmond. Misses off the left eye. And it's Bryant in the corner. Off target with the open look. Boy, defense non-existent there. But they catch a break as he whiffs it. Guarded by Kobe. Passes it to Williamson. Got it! And what a sensational bucket to bring them within one. And you can't get a bigger bucket than that. Well, that was one, too. He wanted the ball. Nobody else was taking that shot. Van Exel vicious to O'Neal. Pass to Campbell. And they stop the clock as soon as they can with the intentional foul. Honestly, just doing what they have to in order to get the basketball back. That's a good foul, though. I like that. I mean, clock management crucial at this time of the game. Second one is good. We both at the line, and it's a three-point game. And the perfect time to be perfect at the line. Only a three can tie it now. Now a timeout called by Sacramento. They're down by three. Nine seconds left to play here in the fourth. What's your take, guys? And if you can get a three, shoot it. Otherwise, get the quick two and a five. Either way, they got to score the ball. Nine seconds left in the fourth quarter. Knocks down the trifecta. It's been this way since halftime. Tremendous production from beyond the arc. Boy, it's been a three-point barrage. They came out gunning and have not stopped. And the Lakers call time here. Seven seconds left in the fourth quarter. Can't cash in. You had a foul to give there, but you'd rather not have it cost your team points. I agree. I mean, you would have been better off using it on the floor and not on the shot. But the foul had to come either way, so it is what it is.
And he can't get the second one to drop either. Coming up empty that time. Timeout called by the Kings. Oh, and he had a chance to win it right there, but couldn't get it to fall. And that's going to do it for regulation. So we are headed to overtime. We'll take a quick break, then get you back to the action. And now we get set for overtime in what has been a stirring contest. So the Lakers win the tip. And always a good ride in these post-regulation battles. This overtime now looking to be an exciting one. All fueled up and ready to go to overtime basketball here. Brought to us by Gatorade. Let's check out who's on the floor. On the court for Sacramento. And it's Williamson missing. You know, I think the effort on defense there has everything to do with why he missed that shot. Well done. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley-oop. This is to Richmond. And no good. Had a chance to take the lead there. And Los Angeles guys uh, shooting straight 49% from the field. Van Exel kicks to Kobe. The pass to O'Neal. Six on the shot clock. Richmond with the steal. And Richmond with the stuff. Watching Richmond get up and throw it down. Yes, sir. Superb at elevating to the rack. Van Exel passes to O'Neal. to Van Exel. Here's Campbell, and Campbell throws it down. And Van Exel, a, a quick decision maker, especially when it comes to shredding the D with his passes. Campbell defending. Pass to Owens, and the powerful one-handed slam. And those plays can make a difference in a game like this. <laughs> well, you know it's going to fire up, Greg, everybody on that bench. Making a statement for sure. I mean, we'll see if they can maintain that aggressive approach, guys. The free throw drops for Bryant. And Bryant is the total platinum level pack. A lethal shooter, an exceptional defender, a flat-out assassin on offense, and most importantly, this guy's a leader, too. Just solid. Really, one of the very best there is at the free-throw line. Passes to Williamson. Richmond outside. Shoots. Rebound the Lakers. Checks. And here's Los Angeles. A three from Bryant. Richmond with the rebound. Tell you what, the defense was lucky there. I mean, leave him that open from range, he'll typically knock it down. High arcing shot. He gets hauled in by Los Angeles. Here's Bryant. And again, the Lakers no good. Very surprising that he came away empty there, especially given room to operate. To the middle to take the lead, and it's Shaq laying it in. Shaq's got 21 in the game. O'Neal doing a nice job using his body so well whenever he has the ball. A top-tier scorer for sure. Colonies defended by Shaq. And there's the whistle. Three-second violation. Jones checked in for Bryant. And so it's the Lakers with it. 
going. Overtime basketball, a little under three and a half minutes into it. Eldon Campbell with the rebound. Campbell's got rebound number eight here tonight in the game. And Exel passes to Campbell. And Campbell throws it down. Oh, just solid on the one-handed slam. And guys, when it's a tight ball game like this, he's the guy they want with the ball. Somebody you can count on. He is an extremely reliable finisher. That one's good. The Laker lead is cut down to two on the bucket from Owens. And, you know, coaches will take possessions like that all day long. Phenomenal use of the screen there. Here's Van Exel. Sweet little floater. And it's all about the release when you shoot the floater. The Kings have gotten off to a less than ideal start here in overtime offensively, hitting only three of their first eight shots. Mr. Williamson launches a three. That one doesn't drop. So Los Angeles will take it the other way. Right side, Jones. Richmond with the steal. It's rebounded by Campbell. Well, you will not see that from him very often, especially right at the rim. So it's the Lakers now. They lead by four. And the pass to Van Exel. Shoots from the line. That one misses. That's exactly how you have to defend him. He's a guy that the D needs to be aware of at all times. Seven second difference, shot and game clock. Richmond, nice fake there to create the shot, but it's no good. And now they decide to foul intentionally. And the first of two, no good, heartbreaker. That's good, going one of two from the line, and that puts them up by five. Now a timeout called by Sacramento. They're trailing by five. There's 18 seconds left in the first overtime. Action has been terrific. Owens passes to Richmond and a missed late. And they go to the intentional foul. You have to foul, but I'm sure they would have liked to foul someone different. Yeah, but Greg, they didn't really have a, another option. I mean, I thought they did a nice job getting it in his hands and making sure he was the guy who go to the line. So he gets them both, and it's a seven-point game. Perfectly done at the strike there. That brings their lead up to an even more comfortable level. Now a timeout called by Sacramento. They trail by seven. We've got 13 seconds left in overtime. What do you think, guys? Trying to keep hope alive, but, but I don't see them making a comeback. You know what? I'm sure crazier things have happened, or, or maybe not. It's, it's a long shot, though. He's a three off the inbound. He gets hauled in by Los Angeles. And you could tell he thought he had a little more space, but the defender was right there. You know, that's a trademark of his defense. Quick to react, close down the shooter, and then affect the shot. And so the Lakers take the win. You have to think at this point, a three zip. It's only a matter of time now, Greg, until this series is in the books. Uh, you know, this victory all but seals the deal. As strong as they look throughout this game and this series, I'll be shocked if they don't close it out in game four. Well, that'll do it for now. Glad you could join us for the first round of the Western Conference playoffs. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. So long, everyone.
Green, the pass to Hunter. He dishes it to Hill. Shoots over Grant. Offensive rebound. Fouled on the shot and picks up two points. So one free throw coming up. How about that one? Able to maintain control and finish the play. And the Pistons making a change here. Long's checked in. And the Magic making a change here. drops for Ratliff. The Magic trail by six. So on the floor for Orlando. They've got Scott. Anderson is out there with Armstrong. Then there's Grant and it's Cycli in at the five roaming the paint. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Trying to snap them out of this little slump. Just feels like the basket is looking awfully small to them right now. They're having a hard time getting anything to fall. And now the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, Grant Hill. And I love that it's been a hard charging performance. Jump shots have been kind of an afterthought. His main goal has been to attack the rim and put the D in some tough spots and also finishing strong. On the sideline, let's catch up with Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Well, during the break, I listened in on what the head coach for the Magic was saying to his team. He knows they struggled at the free throw line, but he actually looked at the positive. He said, if we continue to get to the foul line, good things are going to happen. But we have to keep getting there. Maybe that'll take the heat off in the world. I mean, he makes plays like that in his sleep. The game is just far too easy. Armstrong passes to Cycli. No good. Excellent D there from Ratliff. Guys, a good chance for them to slow it down. Yeah, they definitely should use some clock here. Hunter dishes the hill. Down low. Long. It's back to Hill. Down to five on the shot clock. The Pistons need to get off a shot here. It's good from long range. Hill's got the lead up to 11 now for the Pistons and entering the final countdown game four effectively decided here guys this is just a tremendous accomplishment for Detroit you know a team can have a great shooting night without getting a lot of assists but tonight they had both yeah and listen you only get the assist if the guy you give it to makes the shot so a lot of assists will up your field goal percentage but this is a great team effort by everyone and while there was some nice performances tonight it definitely ended up being a solid outing for Hill Boy, forget about his stats for a second, right? What impressed me most was his stamina. It seemed like he was involved in every play. And with that kind of activity, I don't know how you don't wear down. Here is Armstrong. Grant Hill making his last shot. Stolen away. Nice job to interrupt the alley-oop attempt there. Now, Hunter. And so it's the Pistons taking care of business here. This was a crucial game for him, tying up the series at two apiece, Greg, a, a huge accomplishment. And this series, I think, hinged on who picked up game four, Kevin. I mean, now it's a three-game series, and anything can happen. And that about wraps it up for this broadcast of the NBA Eastern Conference quarterfinals. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Alton, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for tuning in. So long and good night, everyone.
Stockton against Carr to the inside. That puts them in the lead. Malone's got four points in the quarter. Yeah, you, you got to love the recognition there. Stockton just so unselfish, always looking to find the open man. And so in the game for the Timberwolves, we've got Garnett. Carr is out there with Robinson. And it's Marbury in at the one. Shot clock at six. And foul on the shot. So he'll get a chance at the line. He hits the first one, and that ties the game up. Russell, he's checked in for Utah. Hornacek comes in for Isaac. And a change for the Timberwolves. Garrett's checked in. So making both free throws. That'll give them the lead here. Tight ball game. Who do you want at the charity strike? This guy. Stockton passes to Malone. That's good. And a nice assist from Stockton. Malone's got 20 points. And that's about the worst defense I can imagine a team playing coming down the stretch. And I love the play call. This is where you get the ball into the hands of your closers, where they can do something with it. PG, that's good. Man, that they need those points. And I bet he's the guy that continues to go for it. He will use his size, his skills, and his shooting ability to go get this win. Now here's Tuck inside. And the jam by Carl Malone. I love watching Malone just use that strength. He, he's so good at just kind of burrowing his way inside and then finishing above the rim. Here's Marber. Goes up on the wing. And that's collected by Hornacek. Easy chance for mid-range. Wouldn't be surprised to see them run that play again. Outside for Stockton. Pass to Malone. A rebound by Garnett. Great defensive effort. Just saved a basket. You know what? This is why you never give up on a play. You don't know what's going to happen. That is world class. Incredible shot with everything on the line coming through for his team. Stockton against Garnett. Stockton draws the double. Also with a wide open look. Bullseye! And Stockton is simply one of the best, especially when it comes to finding people on the floor. Minnesota calls timeout. They're behind by two. 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. this game closing in on the final buzzer let's take a look at our Jordan player of the game and his shooting percentage reflects just how efficient he's been it's better than 50 percent always a sign of a solid offensive performance but his movement and his shot selection have also both been tremendous and on our sideline our reporter David Older hey Kevin well I was able to listen in to the Timberwolves head coach talking to his team he wants them to have an even temperament. He said, I like the energy, but don't rush. Don't force things. Let the game come to you. Kevin, it's difficult to play with everything on the line with that kind of equilibrium. He had to foul and on that occasion to stop the clock. That's the enemy in this situation. And no good as the first free throw missing for him. We'll see if he can nail the second. And Malone, a remarkable power forward. His footwork, incredible. And that jump shot is wet. He can't make the second free throw either. Missing both. You know, I don't believe in the word choke, but to come away empty right there is brutal. This game would have been over. Ooh, off one. Now they foul and stop the clock. He 
doesn't hit the first, and that was the one they really wanted. He's got one more, though. Stockton, just a remarkable point guard. Lights out shooter and an even better distributor. He's able to hit the second one, and that makes it a three-point lead. And so it's Utah who scraped by with a win. This was a crucial game for him, tying up the series at two apiece, Greg. A, a huge accomplishment. And this series, I think, hinged on who picked up game four, Kevin. I mean, now it's a three-game series, and anything can happen. And that about wraps it up, folks. We hope you've enjoyed our broadcast of the NBA Western Conference quarterfinals. For David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and Steve Smith, So it's Detroit now. It's a three-point game. Grant is out there with Wilkins. Then there's Armstrong. Then there's Hardaway. And it's Thomas in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. That's who's out there for Orlando. You have to foul, but I'm sure they would have liked to foul someone different. And he cannot get the first one to drop. Tough one to miss. <laughs> and Hardaway's nickname came from his grandmother. She was calling him pretty. But with that southern draw, it sounded like Kenny. Ratliff's checked in for four. Time called here. The Pistons decide to talk it over. They trail by four. We've got 22 seconds left in the fourth. Guys, what do you think? Uh, trying to stay alive. They've got to work quickly. Yeah. Uh -uh. Time is of the essence. Basket and the foul. That's got to be the game. Plan. Chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Penny Hardaway. And, guys, this really has been his night. He's done a lot of things well, but his scoring really put him over the top. You can see how determined he's been every time he's gotten his hands on the ball. Great drive and also great focus offensively. He has a chance now to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Hall of Famer David Aldrin. Thanks, Kevin. Well, the head coach of the Pistons talked to his team during the break. We told him, look, guys, we're running out of time. We're going to make a move. It's got to be now. Are you guys ready to make a move? They all nodded, and he said, then go take it, Kevin. Thank you, David. And it's a wrap. <laughs> Any chance they may have had for a comeback just went out the window with those three players. And now they decide to foul intentionally. Good on the first, and that makes it a seven-point lead. And Anderson has always been a dependable role player. Uh, a strong forward with a gorgeous stroke there from deep. And so it's Orlando winning this one. This was a pivotal game in the series so far, and they were able to keep their heads great, get the job done, and take the all-important three games to two lead. Now they can breathe yeah, right. just a little bit easier oh knowing goodness. they're just one win away from closing this thing out. Had they lost this game, the pressure on them would have been huge. Oh, just gigantic. You're right. Well, that'll do it for now. Glad you
Here's Ward. Starks outside. Pass to Ward. New York moving the ball around. Ewing can't get it to go. Right thing there to stay that tight on him and, and really try to keep him out of his comfort zone. On the court for Indiana. Miller is out there with Jackson. And there's Davis. And it's Rose. And it's Smith. And at the center, filling out the middle. Now here's Johnson. To the inside. That's in, and the Pacer lead is cut down to just two points in the bucket from Ewing. And one reason why Ewing is not only an all-star talent, but a Hall of Fame talent. Awesome at getting to his spots and then capitalizing. And the Pacers call time here. And starting to send guys to the line way more than they need to. Let's get some good position defense going here. That should be the emphasis and get away from the sloppy fouls. And now a chance to check out some of the tremendous play tonight from our Jordan player of the game. He deserves a lot of credit, but the D they played on him deserves a little bit of the blame as well. Even when he got hot, they didn't do enough, I don't think, to try and cool him off. And they've been passive when they needed to be aggressive, and boy, did he make them pay. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Hi, Kevin. Well, the head coach of the Pacers talked to his team during the timeout. He really got after him in the huddle. He said, look, you can rest after the game. you got to put it all out there if you want to win this one. Back to you guys. Jackson from long range. Here's Davis. Knicks with the rebound. Johnson's got double-digit rebounds now in the game. Pass to Houston. Johnson outside. 11 left in the fourth quarter. Fires from the wing. A shot missing. And Indiana will come the other way. Here's Smith. Jackson passes to Davis. Kicks it to McKee. Like at six. To the paint and taken away by Johnson. It's three on three on the fast break. Here's Starks. Good D by Miller. That's a surprise. I mean, really out of character for him to miss when the defense is not right up on him. The Pacers making a change here. Rose is checked in, and that's an intentional foul. He drops the first one, and that puts them up by five. Second one. Can't waste any time here. Well, it's probably a little bit too late here, but you really need to score a bucket here to stay alive. Here's Houston. Johnson outside. The pass to Houston. From deep. Good! And he has brought them to within two points. Remember that one. Guys, a difference maker. I'm wondering, Greg, is that the biggest shot of the game? Yeah, you can't let him hold the ball and just milk those last seconds away. That's the first, and that makes it a three-point lead. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a four-point ball game. And that's the knockout blow right there, guys. Those free throws should put this one away. New York calls timeout. They're trailing by four. 11 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Guys, what's your take? Yeah, trying to get back in this thing. They need a score. It's funny, at this point in the game, the coach is asking the team to be perfect. They haven't been to this point. Three from the inbound. It's good! And that shot brings them to within just one. Gotta love seeing Houston get space there to shoot it from deep. He is one of the best from beyond the arc. And now an intentional foul. They need the ball back as soon as possible. No choice but to foul there, but, it, but he's probably the last guy you want to see on the line. First free throw is good, and that will put them up by two. Both free throws are good, and it's a three-point game. That last one was a difference maker. It pushed it from a two-point lead to three. Johnson kicks to Starks. Miss.
misses the crane. He missed that one, but I've seen him drill shots from that distance in warm-up. Oh, no, I know he can make it, but th that's warm-up, so maybe just a step too far. So a close game sees Indiana take this one. People were riding their obituary before this game, but, <laughs> but this win cast the series in a whole new light now. Greg. And listen, they still got to win two more, but after seeing how they perform tonight, is there any doubt, Kevin, they're can One thirty-five left in the game. Porter is out there with Carr. Then it's Robinson, and it's Garrett in at the five down low. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. Porter passes to Garrett. One-on-one -on -one fast break. Here's Malone. And that won't go, missing the go-ahead bucket. And there's the pass to Marburg. Powered down after the assist, let him into the lane. Just the kind of play they need in a game this close. You know, that's the kind of aggression they want from their four lead. And it just forces the defense to pay more attention to him, guys, which we know can open up things for others. Here's Malone following the bucket by the Timberwolves. Stockton kicks to Russell. Six on the shot clock. Hornacek with it. Now guarded by Porter. And with that shot, the Timberwolves lead is cut down to just one on the bucket from Hornacek. They'll be trying to take as much time off the clock as they can. Exactly. Expect to see longer possessions from this point on. Here's Marburg. Here's Carr. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. Really, uh, the right play defensively, if you can't block, force him to the line. Yeah, exactly. Prevent the layup. Give him a little bump, and then maybe they'll think twice about coming into the lane next time. And if they don't think about it, at least they might be distracted by your presence. Can't sink it. And that was an important free throw. Can't afford any wasted possessions down the stretch. The defense needs to be just as sharp, but it's not over yet. Passes it to Malone. Over Garnett to tie it up. Oh, no good. Malone, a remarkable power forward. His footwork, incredible. And that jump shot is wet. And that hurts as he doesn't get the first one to fall. Trying to focus now on the second. Second of two is good. That narrows the gap to one. And now we've got the intentional foul. Had to foul and on that occasion to stop the clock. That's the enemy in this situation. And you know what, Greg? Who knows? A few misses at the strike, and they're right there within range. You know, late game free throws are a lot different than early game free throws in terms of making. Those were pressure pack free throws. And he looked as cool as he could be. So big to give them that three-point lead. Utah calls timeout. They're trailing by three. There's 10 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Guys, your thoughts? And if you can get a three, shoot it. Otherwise, get the quick two and a foul. Either way, they got to score the ball. 
And now we've got a moment for our Jordan player of the game, Kevin Garnett. And he's provided them with a major mismatch on that low block tonight. That They've been able to lean on his scoring in the paint. And if nothing else has worked, he, he's given them a reliable option on every possession. So it's Minnesota taking the W in a close one. This was a pivotal game in the series so far, and they were able to keep their heads straight, get the job done, and take the all-important three games to two lead. Now they can breathe yeah, right. just a little bit easier, oh, knowing goodness. they're just one win away from closing this thing out. Had they lost this game, the pressure on them would have been huge. Oh, just gigantic. You're right. Well, that'll do it for now. Glad you could join us for the first round of the West. Here's Ryder, Drexler defender. Barkley grabs the board. Pockets leading by five. Drexler out there with ABC. And it's ABC. Then it's Elijah Wan. And it's Barkley in at the force. That's the five for Houston right now. And it's still a rare sight to see rebound numbers like the ones he's had tonight. Oh, great instinct. Relentless. Seems like he's getting to every miss. But they get exactly the matchup they want inside. I mean, and it gives them the biggest bucket of the game. Timeout called the Rockets. They're leading by three. 143 left to play here in the fourth. And now we get the chance to present our Jordan player of the game, B. It seems like he spent a huge chunk of this game at the free throw line. And, and that's a good thing. It, it shows how aggressive he's been. And when your free throw attempts are in the double digits, you know you're not playing the game soft. The Trailblazers making a switch here. Robinson's checked in. And we've got an update here. So let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Hey, guys. Well, the Rockets coach had some words for his team during the timeout. He likes the effort. He likes the play. He said, look, we're rolling now, guys. Let's get that momentum and keep it. And let's make the most of it to win this series. See if they can get it done. There's 126 left in the fourth quarter. Parkland. That one doesn't go. And it's Portland the other way. Stolen by Drexler. Elijah on against Robinson. And now here comes Robinson leading the break. Oh, he touched it while it was in the cylinder. That's offensive basket interference. So Mack will bring it up for Houston. It's a three-point game. Here's Drexler. Puts it up from 12. It's in! And how about the offensive explosion here by Clyde Drexler? Has really developed his skill set. No one's been able to match up with him all night. Here's Ryder. Pass to Robinson. Anderson with the ball. Drexler defending. Good! And he has brought them to within two points. Oh, you just love seeing a player with absolutely no fear. Yeah, he approached that one with total confidence. He has what it takes to come through in the clutch. Two-second difference between shot clock and game clock. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. First, and that narrows the gap to one. That one drops. 
he ties it up. Wrong guy to put on the line in the close game. You know he's not going to miss. Now a timeout called by Houston. ABC on the pass to Drexel. Here's Bart. Pulls up on the wing. Oh, missed it. Now a timeout called by Portland. Seconds left to play in the final quarter. To win the game. Oh, it's no good. And we're headed to overtime. And regulation now complete. We will go to overtime. We'll be back shortly live from Houston, Texas. Well, four quarters weren't enough to decide this ball game. Sit back and enjoy as we move on to overtime. So the Rockets win the tip. And so they have the first opportunity on offense right here as we begin overtime. Courtesy of Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineup for us now in overtime. On the court for the Trailblazers. Wallace is out there with Robinson. And there's Anderson. And it's Sabonis in at the center position. Here's Anderson following the score by Houston. Robinson passes to Anderson. Outside, Robinson. Shot clock at six. Back to Anderson. On deep. Rockets with the rebound. Trucks has got his sixth rebound on the night. Knocks down the three ball. ABC's got the lead up to five now for the Rockets. But he doesn't have a clear path to the hoop, so why not? I mean, pull up and bury the three in transition. Ryder. Second chance effort. He takes it up and lays it in. His hard work on the backboard really just has given them more opportunities to score. Pass to Barkley. Over Wallace. And it's Barkley missing. He's got to be disappointed with his performance, but it'll be easier to swallow if they keep the lead. Down low. Sabonis, the pass to Ryder. Hakeem Olajuwon pulls it down. Oh, and a fast break for the Rockets. And Trexler throws it down home. Oh, good look there as well. And this is what Hakeem's worked on. Pay too much attention to him, and he'll burn you with a nice find. The free throw drops for Drexler. And here's Anderson. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. And the first one drops. It's also good, so he hits both free throws. Oh, he's never rattled at the strike. Always has that nice, soft touch on his free throws. From 12 feet out, it's hauled in by the Trailblazers. Wallace has got 13 rebounds in the game. Seeding. Buries the long-range jumper. Wallace has got 28 points for the game. And obviously his momentum from the last game has carried over here tonight. Yeah, that's why he's hot. He's playing with a lot of confidence. That's why they're going to him with such consistency. Now a timeout called by Houston.
Here's ABC. He's covered by Anderson. Parker. The Rockets again can't hit. That's high quality defense right there. Read the situation, reacting, and making that a very tough jump shot. A fantastic effort on D to get up in his face and deny the layup. Here's Drexler. Good. And a nice assist from Matt. And he has 28 points for the game. He wants the ball. They want him to have the ball. And as usual, he comes through in the clutch. Here's Ryder. Matt grabs the miss. And that is a textbook example of how to defend your rim. Well, that's why he's out there right now. In situations like this, he stands tall to prevent points. Here's ABC. A nice shot by Elijah Wong. And how about the killer pull of Elijah Wong? Loves to put the team on his back when the game gets tight. Now here's Anderson. Elijah Wong with the block. And he gets it back. And Wallace gets double teamed. Passes it to Sabonis. Dishes it to Robinson. Shot clock at five. And here's Anderson for three. Nailed from three point land. Anderson's got 20. And they've got to talk to you, each other on D there. Miscommunication. And now he's able to make a pay. Elijah Wan dishes to Drexler. Back to Elijah Wan. Plays it up off the glass. Elijah Wan's got four this quarter. And that's just too deep. Uh, Elijah Wan with way too many moves in there. Almost automatic. Anderson passes to Robinson. Back to Anderson. Pass to Sabonis. In the corner, Wallace with it. No good on the triple. And they had some botched coverage that turned into no coverage. Took him no time at all on that one. And now a seven-point rocket lead. Time called here. The Blazers decide to talk it over. They're down by seven. 52 seconds left in the first overtime. The dude, he's checked in for ABC. And it's out of bounds. The Trailblazers able to retain possession here. Great instincts from him to get a hand on that pass and tip it out. We're just trying to prevent the opposition from getting comfortable. Next time, that one might get picked. Here's Ryder. Drexler defender. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. All oh, the officials are all over that one. He hits the first one, and that turns the lead to six. makes both free throws. Boy, did they need those free throws to go down. They're definitely within striking distance. The dude passes to Matt. There's the pass to Bark. Here's the dude. Wallace covering. Down to five on the shot clock. Drexler outside. From deep three-point range. It's hauled in by the Trailblazers. Time called here. The Blazers decide to talk it over. They trail by five. There's 21 seconds left in the first overtime. Action has been terrific. What's your take, guys? They're yeah, trying to get back in this thing. They need a score. Yeah, and quick. No room for error. No time to waste. And here are the Trailblazers now, trailing by five. Sabonis, no good. And so they choose to intentionally foul. And he commits the intentional foul. And he misses the first one. Boy, he wanted that one to fall. That's good, going one or two from the line, and that increases their lead to six. Outside, Robinson. Again, the miss by the Trailblazers. He lobs up the alley-oop pass. So we see the Rockets get the win here. 
This was a pivotal game in the series so far, and they were able to keep their heads straight, get the job done, and take the all-important three games to two lead. Now they can breathe yeah, right. just a little bit easier oh, knowing goodness. they're just one win away from closing this thing out. Had they lost this game, the pressure on them would have been huge. Oh, just gigantic. You're right. And that about wraps it up, folks. We hope you've enjoyed our broadcast of the NBA Western Conference quarterfinals. Here's Dumars. So on the floor for Orlando. They've got Scott. Anderson is out there with Hardaway. Then it's Wilkins. And it's Grant in at the five, roaming the paint. Dumars misses. Magic leading by four. Wilkins passes to Grant. Now Hardaway. And stolen by Hunter. Oh, and he plucks it off the glass. Wow. Grant against Hill. And he could not get that one to go. Out of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Grant Hill picks one up. Yeah, but I just love the winning mentality that Grant brings. A big bruising forward who can score at a steady clip. one drops and that puts them up by five and he hits both free throws here so now it's a six point ball game and he just garnered a little bit more insurance there very confident as he's able to go up and knock those down Now, oh, here's Hunter. Started by Hardaway. Here's Long. Great D that time from Hardaway. Boy, surprise team missed that. The defense just good enough to prevent that bucket. 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Back to Anderson. Six to shoot. And the three off target. You've got to find a way to get yourself going in some other way because hoisting from three is not the answer. And he gets contact and the whistle on the shot. Two shots coming up. And the foul goes against Orlando. He drops the first one, and that brings them within five. And the word you got to use is explosive out there when, when talking about Grant Hill. He's one of those guys who doesn't wait for the game to come to him. He, he goes out and just makes things happen. And so they foul intentionally. Yeah, you, you have to do that, though. You can't just let them dribble the game out. He gets the first, and that puts them up by five. And, and Hardaway's nickname came from his grandmother. She was calling him pretty, but with that southern draw, it sounded like Penny. Well, what a performer this guy is. Game is on the line. He stands up and delivers. Now a timeout called by Detroit. They're trailing by six. 12 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Guys, your thoughts? Uh, they need a quick basket here. Well, preferably a three, right? If there's a clean look, take it. A chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Penny Hardaway. And to me, the best part of his game has been 
the work he's done inside. I mean, slashing, driving the lane, attacking the basket at every chance. When he's had an opening, he's taken it. Here's Dumars. Again, the miss by the Pistons. Got his hand out enough on that one to bother the three-point attempt. Great hustle on that one. You know, we talk about this time and time again, trying to stay connected to shooters along the perimeter. Nicely done. He's able to hit the second one, and that makes it a seven-point lead. From deep, knocks down the three. Just a tremendous all-around player. Dumars at times showing us the deep range. And they're going to move on to the conference semifinals. It took them six games to do it, Greg, but they finally asserted themselves and move on to round two. And I really think it benefits a team to have a competitive series in, in round one. It gets those playoff juices kind of flowing, if you will. Prevents any kind of complacency from setting in. Well, that'll do it for now. And you can join us during this first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. For Doris Burke, David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and the rest of our terrific 2K Sports crew, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. See